Hi, Mama. Phoenix. Kitty, kitty. Kitty, kitty. Hi. Hi, baby. Hey guys welcome back to my channel it's amanda and today we're talking about sleep training as you can see i have my bonnet on i have my robe because it's night it's currently why do i have my flashlight on it's currently eight or oh, you guys can see eight zero two in the night and phoenix is asleep so we officially say sleep training today now if you guys don't really know much about sleep training i'll leave a link above here to my previous video on sleep training mk when he was nine months phoenix is seven months old she turned seven months on the third of december today is 18 so seven months and some change and we've officially started sleep training her now if you're a mom a new mom and you co-sleep with your kids and you're trying to transfer them from the your bed to a crib or you're just trying to get your kids to sleep through the night at least then you might you know have heard about sleep training or you might have done your research about sleep training so sleep training is basically when a baby learns how to sleep there are so many methods of sleep training um, parents can do the fib fiber method which is more on the I'll call it like a calm method where you your baby has a structured schedule throughout the day and a routine that you guys follow and when it's bedtime a specific time in the night you feed your baby do the, all those the, your night routine and then when the baby is drowsy you put the baby down the baby cries for about five minutes and then you go in you soothe the baby you pat the baby and then you leave again it's more like reassuring the baby that you're there nearby and then um, and you keep coming in to check in every five minutes and after checking in five minutes you check in ten minutes six minutes or seven minutes like you keep adding like a minute some people at two minutes some people at five minutes however it is you want to do it um, some people do that but they usually start at five minutes now most people that usually do this method or when they recommend this type of method is when your baby is on the younger size like say four months so it's recommended that if your child is not sleeping through the night at four months your child should be able to sleep through the night but some parents are not comfortable enough to sleep during their kids at four months I'm sleep training my child at seven months so I was not ready until now while some babies are naturally good sleepers they just go to bed thumbs up to those babies and those mamas they are so lucky but most kids are not like that so we're basically teaching the kids to sleep they need sleep is good for them parents need sleep is good for for us as well so every is a win-win in both ways now um that's fiber method is usually used for younger kids because they are still very young, newborn and tender. You don't want to let them cry for that long. Now, there is also a hybrid method that my pediatrician, the pediatrician to um, Phoenix recommended when Phoenix was six months old. Now, she, she's, she has never slept through the night, ever, like without waking up to feed. She always wakes up to feed. But she's also a good sleeper as well. She wakes up to feed. After sleeping, she goes straight back to sleep. Now, at four months, you're supposed to cut off feeding for your child throughout the night. They can go 12 hours straight without eat, sleep eating at night. And at six months, she's still feeding at night. Now, so most times when she wakes up, she doesn't have like a full feed. That is how you know that she's not actually hungry. She's using that food food to soothe because she's been used to feeding at night, night right from newborn now my pediatrician recommended like a hybrid method he said in her room make it pitch dark as much as possible put on the sound machine it helps to block out any form of noise when you put her down after doing your regular routine instead of waiting five minutes you wait like 15 to 20 minutes now you you don't go pick her up no matter how much she screams for about 15 to 20 minutes and then after the first time you add it you add another five minutes each or 10 minutes each and that is like a hybrid instead of letting her cry the whole time and now 
the method I'm using tried and tested that I use throughout for my other kids now this is my fourth baby I used it for MK which was my first I used it for snow I used it for sky and now I'm using it for Phoenix is the cry it out method the cry it mild method usually works better if your child is at least above six months crying would not hurt your baby it you would feel bad as the parents but it would is the fastest method toughest but fastest now the fiber method can take anywhere between five to five days to 14 days for it to work the hybrid method will take anywhere between five to seven days to work and then cry it out method takes anywhere between three days and five days to work so it's usually shorter now based off of experience from day three with all my kids they start sleeping without crying for like a huge long time with mk he cried up to like four to five minutes the first day and then the next day 30 minutes and then the third day 10 minutes and by the fourth day he didn't cry at all he just complained while i was leaving the room and left within like less than a minute he stopped crying hopefully it's going to be the same for phoenix i know every baby is different but you got to um kids can you know Maybe they'll be fine day one and day two they might change and day three they might be fine. I don't know. But based off of research and based off of what I've experienced with my other kids, mm. they, it has only progressed from day one to day two to day three. And then they sometimes kids have sleep regression, but that's a completely different thing altogether, which is maybe after they've been sleep trained and they've been sleeping through the night, maybe they have a growth sprout or maybe they are teething or they fall sick or something is happening to them and then they just don't sleep through the night. They keep waking up. Same thing I do with my kids is just re-sleep train them again. It takes less than two days and everything is fine. So... Now, today is day one of Phoenix sleep training, and day one is not as smooth as I would have planned, because normally I'm supposed to put her on a two-nap schedule throughout the day, which is in the morning and in the afternoon. But in the morning, I didn't put her, on a, I didn't put her down to sleep. She took a power nap on grandma's arms, which, again, we don't want that. So she took a power nap for about 30 to 45 minutes while my mom was holding her. And then in the afternoon, I was like, okay, we gotta stop sleep, sleep training. So in the afternoon, I, uh, she fell asleep before I put her down, which again, you should not do. Always put your child down while they are drowsy or sleepy but she fell asleep completely before i could come into the room and see her sleeping and then i took her from my mom's room and put her down in her bed in the crib and she slept and she slept for about um 30 minutes but because she's used to sleeping right next to someone she sleeps in my bed at night and she sleeps in grandma's bed during the day to take naps while grandma is on the bed she's used to feeling the touch of someone to like soothe her or calm her she relies on that so she always wakes up for that and most times in the night when I'm, she's sleeping next to me if i ignore her she would literally wake up and tap me and rub my face or rub my body to make sure i'm right next to her and then she falls back asleep so she woke up and she found herself in a strange environment with nobody beside her and she started screaming and she started crying and she cried for she started crying from 2 30 and around 2 55 or 50. it wasn't even up to 30 minutes so anyway like say 25 minutes she stopped crying and i was like hmm okay and she fell back asleep and she didn't cry again until um to four so she slept like good one hour towards the end of the one hour lap she just made a noise i think she was still sleeping but she just she didn't cry she was like <laughs> and then i paid attention to see if she would start crying and she didn't so she kept sleeping and i let her sleep till 4 30 
normally with my other kids four o'clock i must wake them up no matter what but with hers i'm pushing it to 4 30 because i'm trying to make her bedtime later than i usually do now with my other kids bedtime will start from 6 30 7 o'clock they are they are all asleep with her i'm trying to make her bedtime around 7 30 because the older kids go to bed around 8 o'clock and if they are awake and I put her down. I don't want a situation where by all the bedrooms are upstairs. Yeah, she has a noise machine and all that, but I don't want a situation whereby they would go upstairs brushing their teeth and taking a shower and then wake her up. I want to avoid that as much as possible. So I, I'm trying to put her to bed close to the other kids' bedtime. That way, I reduce the amount of noise they make. And now they all know I've had a conversation with them. We are sleep training Phoenix, so everybody, when you're brushing your teeth, you gotta be quiet. So, we are working on that. Today worked out perfectly fine, so tonight it was, uh, I gave her a bath by, because by 6.30 she was already complaining, like she was, she wanted to take a power nap, which she usually does, but my goal was to keep her awake till bedtime, so I took her upstairs, stimulated her, played with her, she woke up more, and then I gave her a shower seven o'clock I, I gave her her dinner and then by after seven it was exactly 7 22 i took her upstairs my mom was like hey is it not still too early i said by the time we are done reading and her trying to fall asleep it would be probably 7 30. my goal was to put her in her bed by 7 30. did i reach, reach that meet that goal no so i read to her rocked um rocked her sang to her and then she when she's sleepy she starts making this sound <laughs> non-stop <laughs> that's when you know she's about to fall asleep she did that and then unfortunately i i forgot to put her swaddle blanket on not swaddle blanket the what do you call this one it's also a swaddle blanket but for older kids wear it's like a singlet and a big gown and they just wear it is safe for babies because i'm not using like regular blankets for her and i want to make sure she's comfortable at night so i had to put that on her and then also put her eye drop on her eye and then the whole thing woke her up but then you know trying to rock her back to sleep again and i officially put her in bed by 7 44. she cried and i was thinking she would cry for as long as she cried in the afternoon which was about 25 minutes but i well i again it's the same bedroom with mine so i'll show you the setup tomorrow morning or at the end of this video which will be tomorrow morning when she's awake i can show you the setup we 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 have for her and then i took a shower and i put her down by 7 44 and by 7 50 i looked at my time and i was not hearing her voice anymore i'm like wait am i still hearing clearly and she was asleep and I'm in shock. So this is day one. I'm going to keep you guys updated, like up till the entry, and maybe one week later, uh, one week later to tell you guys the progress. But guys, if you're a new mom and you're having any issues with your baby sleeping or you having enough rest, please do your research on sleep training and sleep training your child. You're not evil or you know whatever because you're trying to sleep train your child. In fact, your child needs that sleep in order for them to grow and develop properly. They need that sleep. You as a parent also need your rest in order for you to take care of your baby properly as well. So, if you feel like you want to co-sleep till the child is like two, that's your choice. If that works for you, kudos. But man, I can't wait to, you know, have my bed now at least have my personal space with my husband because we need that yes with no baby in between us and have her sleeping comfortably well and i would be able to do my routine and work my schedule around her schedule so if you're having any troubles with your child sleeping through the night do your research on sleep training if you're confused about anything whatsoever, always, always, always ask your child's pediatrician 
and I have my let me show you guys I have my um, sound monitor thing set up right here as you can hear I don't know if you guys can hear that's the noise sound machine you can hear in the bedroom but yes so if she cries I can hear and I can monitor and track and I'll keep you guys updated fingers crossed she wakes up only a couple of times this night because with MK he was waking up every single hour and with all my other kids with snow it was easier with sky sky was the easiest and i noticed that the younger they are when you sleep train them the easier it is for them to fall asleep mk was nine months plus and he was oldest and it was tough he was waking up every hour and crying and then with snow snow woke up only like four times or three times in the night which is usually when he wakes up to feed and then after the first day second day of not of doing the same thing the third day he stopped waking up completely sky didn't even wake up like that sky woke up only like twice and now this is phoenix now sky was younger when i sleep trained her she was about six months and now phoenix is seven months but again fingers crossed i'll keep you guys updated um, well, no, but yeah, I'll see you guys later. Putting all this to the cell, look like a human being, but my eyes still shake because I got pink eye from the kids. You see this eye? See, look. You see? Pink eye, clear eye. Pink eye, clear eye. Anyways, uh, it's 10 51. Uh, Phoenix is down for her nap one for the day. Put her to bed by, uh, went upstairs by 10.45. That was when I, you know, called with her a little bit, rocked her, sang to her, and then put her down. She cried and complained, but it lasted like, it wasn't one to five minutes. It lasted like only three minutes. And now she's sound asleep. Fingers crossed she sleeps for about an hour and 30 minutes or two hours that's the length of time i'm shooting for mom see over here <laughs> is pissed and complaining that i shouldn't have dropped her in the bed when she's awake i should wait for the child to go to bed and tomorrow i won't be at home tomorrow i'm leaving the house in the morning i'm telling her so this is how she's going to put baby to sleep for for doing the sleep training period tomorrow and she said she will not put her down she will not put her down to spoil all the progress of day one and day two you see i'm you see i'm she doesn't want to say it's a mommy you can leave me alone <laughs> mommy what do you have to say for sleep training what do you think about sleep training <laughs> No comment. Mm. Okay. Well, in my opinion, everything went fine. Oh, yes. Update from last night. Uh, when I put her to, down to sleep, she woke up by 12, after 12, I think about 25 minutes after 12. And then she cried for about five minutes. I went back to sleep. And did not wake up again till why is my camera crooked? Okay, there we go. And did not wake up again till um, till when was that? Six after after six in the morning. So that was like awesome. That was so good. A whole lot like awesome and better compared to um, MK. Sky was like that as well. So. I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact that they were both younger when we sleep trained them. So uh, when she woke up by after six, I got up, made her milk, but she fell right back asleep. So I don't know if she actually woke up or if she was just making noise in her sleep because she just went eh eh and it wasn't even up to 30 seconds. I didn't hear her voice again. So I let her sleep till 7.30 and then I, I woke her up by 7.30 in the morning and I fed her and she was up until 10.45. I was trying to shoot for 10.30, either any, any time between 10.30 and 11. 
so that at least she'll get one hour 30 minutes and then her afternoon nap i'm shooting for anywhere between 2 and 2 30 so she'll get anywhere between um one hour 30 minutes to two hours nap so that's the goal and schedule for her sleeping for this period and moving forward but she did great i'm actually very happy like i slept in in the room and i didn't even like she didn't bother me at all i was so happy i'm very impressed so fingers crossed it continues like that <laughs> This one is still in happiness. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that wraps it up for sleep training your child. I'll keep. I'll probably insert a clip at the, after this one about how it went. Maybe one week post sleep training, and then summarize what has happened so far. So yeah. So. A little bit of an update with our sleep training this is just to show you that you know in as much as she's on a strict schedule you have to do things according to um, your baby like follow your baby's cues so I mean her room now is currently 5 30 in the evening she's not supposed to take a nap and she's not supposed to be awake um she's not supposed to sleep right now like go to bed right now but she's so cranky i know she needs a, a nap because her second nap which was supposed to be in the afternoon for some reason she woke up and she kept screaming they want to go back to sleep and she's been cranky ever since then because now she's super tired so i'm just going to stay here rock her a little bit each time i go to go keep her back in her crib she starts complaining meaning she knows it's not time for her to sleep but you know she's extremely exhausted she can't help it so i'm going to just stay here and rock her a little bit she's awake she's wide awake look at her right here she's wide awake i'm gonna stay here rock her a little bit um see if she can just rest for like 15 minutes and then i'll wake her up properly then i would adjust her going down for bed from 7 o'clock to 7 30 or maybe 7 45 so that she can be tired like very tired before i put her down so but this is just like a one-time thing you understand what i mean um we've been sleep training for more than two weeks now and after the four she got so used to you know her schedule she's been fine but i think what is throwing her off today is because yesterday was um we went out in the night to celebrate sky's birthday and we didn't come back super early for her bed bedtime so ever since yesterday her schedule has just been eh. but i'm sure that by tomorrow she'll be back to her usual schedule of taking two naps and going down to bed by between 7 and 7 30 for her bedtime so yeah that's just a little update but she's been doing amazing and if you want to try sleep training honestly i can't say this enough go ahead and do it to save your life literally because i've been getting enough rest enough sleep i've had time to do anything i want to do i've had time for my husband i've had time for myself just because now i know she has a specific routine and i know the specific time she goes down to sleep and i can walk around her schedule so yeah thank you guys for watching this video if you did like it don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video bye